Um, hi, Zoe, how are you? Good, thank you, AJ. How are you? I'm fine, I'm fine. Thanks for joining me today just to talk about treaty. Yes, that'd uh, be great. Uh, my first question is, what is a treaty? Uh, so a treaty is actually uh, a, an agreement between two sovereign parties. So um, it is for our um, our government, who's a sovereign um, body, and also Aboriginal people, traditional owners, um, and, um, you know, also our sectors within the governance, government space. So, you know, um, it can be with the education department, with the health department, water, um, nature parks, our land uh, mob and things like that. Yeah. And what's your role in, in the treaty process? Uh, so I'm, an, I'm a democratically elected member. Um, I am the reserve seat holder for Bunurong Land Council. So I was voted in by my membership for the Bunurong Land Council. As Bunurong Land Council has the registered Aboriginal party status, they have a reserved seat at the table as a traditional owner group. Okay. What's actually happening here in Melbourne at the moment in relation to treaty? It's pretty exciting, actually. Um, we are probably... Uh, one the the state that will um, that is furthest along the way um, in the treaty space. So we've you know had a vision uh, and started the process for um, treaty consultations back when um, uh, Annie Jill Gallagher um, was the treaty commissioner. I'm not sure that I think might have been about ten years ago, uh, longer maybe fifteen years ago. And it started with consultation from the community. And then um, we uh, developed an, a framework and, and created the First Peoples Assembly. So First Peoples Assembly is the, the statewide body um, and it has 34 members um, making up of uh, 10 in the metro and four in each region um, and, you know, each, and then you've got the now 12 um, reserve seat holders. So um, in March we uh, all approved that Wamba Wamba um, was applicable to, to take up the additional, um, their reserve seat in, in, in their rights. So um, this is the second iteration. Uh, the first iteration of... Um, of the First Peoples Assembly was made up of people like Nagara Murray, Reuben Berg, who are now the chairs of this Hi. one, um, and people like Annie Muriel Bamblett, um, Annie Jerry, um, Annie Jerry from Fayi, they were the last, um, and um, Marcus Stewart. And, and those are just some of the amazing people that put together the negotiation, treaty negotiation framework. So... Um, that's, that was the first iteration around creating the treaty framework and, um, consultation with the, with the community and then, um, you know, starting the next, um, conversations with government around, okay, this is where we want to head. Are you, um, you know, you keen, they created the, um, they, put in the legislation, the treaty negotiation legislation and created and, and had conversations with all parties and got bipartisan support. So that was their first iteration. Yeah. The second iteration we've been on for about a year now and in that we've done so many um, consultations of community. Uh, we've had statewide forums, regional forums. We've created the... Uh, the elders' voice stand up, and also some independent um, organisations to help us along the way. So we have the Self Determination Fund, which is a standalone body, and they um, we've give, given six, they're coming up to their next fifteen, their last fifteen million, but altogether sixty four million dollars to help traditional owners mobilise and become on equal footing so they can start negotiating treaty. Um, 
And we've got the Treaty Authority, uh, which is made up of five um, Treaty Authority members, and they are Uncle Andrew Jackamos, Thelma Austin, Juan White, um, and Jida Clark, and Peter, uh, Dr. Peter Atkinson. And they are our independent um, umpires as such. So they have uh, created a database to engage with the community, to engage with the traditional owners, owner groups, both that are registered um, Aboriginal parties and the ones that are not. And, um, and to also be that overarching, we've got to all play fair here. You know, yeah. we do have mobs that... Um, are not in agreement with each other, and so they can create um, that mediation platform to get everybody together and sort things out. We have our Yuruk, um, which in Wamba Wamba means truth, um, and they're our Royal Commission into the injustices of, um, of, of the past and system injustices, and they're um, currently still taking submissions, um, but that, you know, they finish in November 2024. Uh, they released, um, you know, recommendations around justice and also our child protection um, uh, systems and, and what our families and children have been experiencing. And they will release, um, they just did the hearings for education uh, housing, um, economic prosperity, political life, and land injustices. And they will release their recommendations um, just periodically in the next, uh, up until the end of the year. So that's our truth and our funding, um, independent funding, and our umpires. And they. That's Ryder. That's a different child. <laughs> um, and basically, so in July, as the Treaty Authority opened um, their database, the First Peoples Assembly um, put in their notification to say that we are we believe that we meet minimum standards and um, we um, are ready to negotiate our statewide treaty. There's going to be many treaties. So we have the statewide treaty and then we'll have traditional owner localised treaties as well. And the statewide treaty, because we are the statewide body, we believe that we are, so we've gone onto the database and we've got 90 days of that are open um, for public commentary. So it can be either a positive comment or, or a negative one, you know, as feedback so that we can you know, take on board what, what community is saying and saying, you know, we're not meeting this, this, this. Um, we have processes in place to be able to meet those stand um, those particular feedbacks. And, um, yeah, so that closes in October and um, we, we will be sitting at the table ready to negotiate treaty with the government um, in November. So there is one part that I did forget. And because there's so many moving parts of all of our, um, <laughs> it's massive, and um, that is our youth voice. Um, we're still in consultation of what that looks like, um, but, um, you know, we're certainly um, looking to get our youth aspirations into what our generational, our, you know, what's going to happen for our ge next generations. Um, and then our elders' voice is our cultural authority you know, our wisdom holders, our, our knowledge holders. So, you know, it, it, it does feel like we are, you know, very inclusive of all and, um, yeah, we've come a long way. <laughs> There's just two quick questions and that is what, what, how, do, how do First Nations people benefit from this treaty? Or treaties? Yeah, so First Nations peoples, um, you know, we we know what's going to help us. We know what's going to work for us. Um, the systems that are in place at the moment are created from a colonial system that was, you know, made originally not to benefit us. 
because we weren't part of the community. We weren't counted as people until 1967. So every process, every policy and legislation that that is affecting our systems now have been built on not including us. So when we, um, you know, treaties allow us to have our voice back in and, and actually start having a say, that's not going to work for us. We need to change that legislation. We need a seat at the table. We need to have, you know, allocated seats to be able to go, no, actually, this doesn't work in the education system for us or it doesn't work in the health system for us. Um, and, you know, make those changes and, and have those agreements. That is going to benefit us in generations to come when, we, when, you know, we're not having to celebrate, oh, my gosh, we've got an Aboriginal judge or doctor, you know, and celebrate that, it'll just be the norm. And, um, you know, having our children finish school in year 12 be higher rates than being imprisoned. You know, we want to shift that dynamic and be aspirational and be really positive for Aboriginal people. Um, it's also about restoring country and having our views valued in the way that we always should have been. And um, we know best country and, and practices that have worked for millennia. And it's about time that we had government come to the party and actually say, we, we trust your science, we trust your theories and methodologies around these and we honour them. You know, we don't want to be seeing bones taken to museums anymore. We just want them to be left alone and, you know, um, and still continue with the relationship between um, the government, water authorities, land, you know, whatever it is. Um, but it's, yeah, it's, and, and to start practising culture in, in a rich way and that is going to heal us. The, the more we get to practise and solidify culture and rebirth, um, awaken, I should say, um, language um, that has just been sleeping and things like that, that's going to actually really strengthen our community and families and it's going to cost less to government in the long run because we're not going to be imprisoned in out-of-home care, you know, um, and all of those sorts of things. So, yes, that's that's the benefit for First, First Peoples. So uh, allied health workers and social workers, when they're working with clients, Aboriginal clients, why should they be informed about this treaty and treaty processes? And Well, I think um, it's really important to become an, a, a really beautiful ally um, for Aboriginal people. And if you don't understand the landscape of what's happening with the treaties, treaty spaces, you may not understand why policies change or why legislation changes. Um, so then that impacts you as, you know, your practice. Um, and also it, it allows you to celebrate with our mob um, around those protective factors that we can work with that as, as allied health or, you know, um, social workers Information is, you know, the key for, for when we're actually yarning up with our most vulnerable children or people, social workers, you know, can be adults, children, teenagers, our elderly, and, you know, and understanding what, what they could be going through. So, and understanding the impacts of colonisation, but also that Victoria is charging ahead and that we are, we will be negotiating treaty in, in November and, it is something to celebrate for all. Well, thanks for being with me this morning, Zoe. Um, I'm pretty sure that the students will have a better understanding now about what 3D is. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.